Although I will say, I love what you, what you said, but I would also like let your girls know, just emphasize, it's not that it's a bad thing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's just that other people's parents might, you know, have different value, you know, so it's make it not it's about the information. It's hard to explain that, but you're right. Book, right. But it's a really important point. Otherwise, yeah. I think kids, another nonverbal, like it's a verbal, but it's also a nonverbal message mm -hmm. saying, you know, mm -hmm. this is a book we only pull out at certain times. Um, so, like you said, every family is different, every, you know, parent, adult is different in how they're going to work with um, what, what, what they choose to share right. with the kids in their lives. And you just have to think about that, but also think about all angles of what that message means. Yeah. Well, you know, what could happen in the case with my daughter is like once my older daughter, once she gets through all of this, she may just share that information with her friends. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't stop her from doing that. Just like I can't stop the boy at recess from simulating sex with, you know, I mean, th this happens mm -hmm. sometimes in schools. And my daughter came home with some very inappropriate gesture that made me uncomfortable and I just thought, Ay, this is, it's already starting, you but know. But that's a teachable moment. Yes, you're right. So you just, you know, you no matter if something looks like it's sort of on the wrong train track or whatever, mm. just reframe it. These messages are everywhere and we're not with our kids all the time. Right. And so it's important that they're coming home and telling you or whatever these conversations are. Because I know you two have a, have a million other experiences. Maybe mm -hmm. not a million, I'm exaggerating <laughs> a bit. Um, you know, but you've had other experiences. We've all had experiences. And those are, you know, it's important that they're coming to you because they trust you. So you're, right. you've established yourself as a trusted source. Mm -hmm. um, but then navigate that and just give them the information that they need. Well, let's talk about that for a second, but I want to check sure. our timing. Hang on. Right, so I was just talking about how, um, so right, that, that teachable moment when my daughter came home imitating a boy who was replicating a sexual act, and this, I gotta say, caught me off guard. I was, I was kind of like horrified to see that, and I, I talked about it a little bit, but I, I'm sure I could have done a more thorough job. <laughs> um, so um, this kind of brings me to the the point of sort of summarizing what we were talking about, and I, I just would love you to um, kind of reiterate some of that about the messages that children receive versus what we give them, and you know how those two things can play against each other. Sure. So we were talking about how sort of our society is bombarded with messages about sexuality. So even if you're not teaching your kids about sexuality, they're still learning about sexuality. So the question is, what do you want them to learn? Mm -hmm. And best that you're the primary sexuality educator and sharing your values and your and, and messages your, that your family believes or that you believe um, to impart that to your children. And the facts. Um, as opposed to, you know, they're definitely learning about stuff on the playground, from watching TV, from their friends, mm -hmm. and oftentimes that's misinformation. Yeah. And, you know, I think too, parents just get overwhelmed with this topic, and so if you just kind of take it as it comes, whether it's bringing up topics in a proactive way through teachable moments, mm -hmm. or just checking in with your kid, just, mm -hmm. you know, just being like, you know, hey, you know, you know what are kids talking about now, what's going on? Um, but always asking their perspective. They don't. Right. They don't always want to hear you talking. Right. Um, and so the question of why are we why are we doing this? The point is that you want to really lay the foundation for them to become sexually healthy. Right. And so I don't see it um, as taking away child's the innocence, innocence, right? Yeah. Because it, I I see that really happening as a consequence of not talking. I right. mean, you know, there's a list of not so fun and pretty awful things that can happen mm -hmm. and the more informed they are about whether it's sexual abuse prevention, right. whether it's just about their body and their sexual health, you know, when they're older, mm -hmm. condoms and safer sex mm -hmm. and, you know, all of that stuff. But then there's a million messages in between. And so the more that you're able to build that in stages through these teachable moments, through these ongoing, they can even be daily conversations, just kind of messages kind of fit in a, into normal conversation, just natural conversation. I mean, we teach our kids how to eat properly, we teach them how to take care of themselves. Right. This is just another piece of it. Right, you know, right, the right. more weird you make it, um, and it might be really uncomfortable in the beginning, and one of the things I talked about in the workshop, um, you know, that Jane came to was that 
If you're really uncomfortable saying penis and vulva or vagina, say it in the mirror a hundred oh, times. Right, right, right. Get yeah. through the laughing. Yeah. You know, and, and we're not always talking about body parts, but you, you, those right. are usually the hardest things right, to right, say. Right. And if you can do that, you can really talk about anything. Okay. Um, so just always to keep in mind, what do I want my child to be as a sexually healthy adult? And you're just building that foundation for them to get there. Good. Thank you so much. You're it was welcome. really informative. If you have any questions, feel free to write me, and I will. You'll see Amy's website um, mentioned a couple of times throughout the show, and um, you should check it out. She has a lot of really great information and resources on that site, including reading lists that can help you uh, make some of these choices and uh, educate your children. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for watching. Bye.